Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. In this video, we will be talking about moments and centers of mass. Uh, and even though they get a little deeper into this in the textbook for uh, Calc 2, I'm going to limit this to uh, masses along a line. Uh, the really fun stuff uh, with this comes in third semester calculus when you talk about the uh, center of mass of uh, two and three dimensional objects. All right, so for masses along a line, first we imagine uh, kind of like a seesaw. So uh, you've got a line balancing on what's called a fulcrum. Again, if you've taken physics, uh, you've probably heard some of this stuff before. Each mass, m sub k, exerts a downward force, m sub k times g, g is the force of gravity, so when you multiply the force times uh, gravity, you get the weight of m sub k, <clears throat> and that force is equal to the magnitude of the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Each of these forces has a tendency to turn the x-axis about the origin, again, the way a child turns a seesaw. This turning effect, called a torque, is measured by multiplying the force, m sub k times g, by the signed distance x sub k from the point of application to the origin. The sum of these torques measures the tendency of a system to rotate about the origin. This sum is called the system torque. So the system torque is equal to M1GX1 plus M2GX2 plus M3GX3. Uh, that assumes that there are three masses. Of course, there can be any number of them. Uh, factoring out G, you get that that uh, system torque is equal to G times the quantity M1X1 plus M2X2 plus M3X3. Thus, the torque is the product of the gravitational acceleration G, which is a feature of the environment in which the system happens to reside, and the number M1X1 plus M2X2 plus M3X3, which is a feature of the system itself. And that number is called the moment of the system about the origin. It is the sum of the moments of the individual masses. And again, there could be any number of them, not necessarily just three. All right, and we will call the moment of a system about the origin M sub zero. M sub zero is equal to the sum of M sub K times X sub K for all values of K. All right, and then the center of mass, which we'll call X bar, that's equal to the system moment about the origin divided by the system mass, which for a finite number of masses would just be the sum of M sub K. So we still need to make this into a calculus problem. The point X bar again is called the system's center of mass. All right, so now we imagine a thin wire uh, going from x equals a to x equals b. A rod of varying density can be modeled by a finite number of point masses, each with mass delta m sub k uh, for values of k ranging from, let's say, 1 to n. Delta m sub k is equal to the density of the wire at the point x sub k times delta x sub k, which is the width of the small amount of wire surrounding that point. All right, and we do that at various points x sub k along the rod. The mass m, the moment about the origin m sub zero and the center of mass x bar are given by these integrals. Uh, m, the mass, is the integral from a to b of delta x with respect to x. Remember, delta x is the density at point x. m sub zero, the moment about the origin, is the integral from a to b of x 
times delta x with respect to x. And then finally, x bar, the center of mass, is the quotient of those two uh, quantities, the moment divided by the mass. All right, so here's our example. We will find the mass m and the center of mass x bar of a rod lying on the x-axis over the interval from one to two, whose density is given by delta x equals two plus three x squared. The mass of the rod is obtained by integrating the density. And I am actually going to jump over to the tablet. I probably don't need to, but give me just a second here. <clears throat> All right. I kind of feel like I'm sometimes not doing as much work as I should if I just rely on the PowerPoint for the calculation. So, so here's the integral that gives us the mass. It's the integral from one to two of two plus three X squared, which is the, den the density function. Uh, this is a very simple integral. The integral of two is two X. The integral of three X squared is X cubed. Plugging in two and then plugging in one, we get four, plus eight minus two times one is two, one cubed is one. So that comes out to 12 minus three, which is nine. All right, so the mass of this rod it, uh, from one to two is nine. To find the center of mass, uh, first we calculate the moment about the origin. So it's almost the same integral, except with an X factor thrown in. All right, so this is gonna be the integral from one to two of two X plus three X cubed. All right, so the integral of two X is X squared. The integral of three X cubed is three X to the fourth over four. Plugging in two, plugging in one, we get four plus, oh, let's see, two to the fourth is 16. 16 divided by four is four, four times three is 12. And then subtracting the value at one, that's one plus three fourths. All right, so we're talking 16 minus one and three fourths. Sometimes it's easiest for me to think of it like this. Although in the next step, um, I'm gonna be div dividing these two quantities. So I think I would rather write that as 57 over four. All right, so we are almost there. Uh, that means that the center of mass is gonna be M zero divided by M which is 57 fourths divided by nine. In other words, one ninth, one ninth times 57 fourths. Let's see, nine and 57 have a common factor three. Nine divided by three is three. 57 divided by three is 19. 19 over three times four is 19 over 12. All right, so of course, the way to think about this is you've got this thin rod uh, between x equals one and x equals two. If you were trying to balance that thin rod, uh, it would balance at the point where x equals 19 twelfths, in other words, one and seven twelfths. Almost in the center, but not quite. All right, and that is actually going to do it for this section. Like I said, we don't get really deep into it. We save most of the fun stuff for Calc 3. All right, we'll see you next time.